and here we go one more time but I've got it this time so this is the 10th take for whatever reason I've been talking like porky pig and I just can't get the words out but that is not all folks we have more so we're gonna get back into our package side of our package versus nuke challenge what are all these bees flying around and stuff well there's a little bit of robbing going on so it's all throughout the entire yard and it just happens this time of the year having some reducers on helps having strong healthy colonies is the best thing and not starting robbing is the best trick of all but it's impossible when you're feeding bees you spill just a little bit or you leave a honey frame out too long and uh, and then it starts and there's not a lot you can do about it especially when you have dozens and dozens of hives in one location all right so it has been three weeks since we even full with these packages almost three weeks and when I was a little disgruntled that uh, the packages weren't keeping up with the nukes even though really when we installed the nukes and if you look at our package versus nuke challenge playlist you'll see on the video where we installed the nukes we went through the packages as well and they really didn't have that big of a difference in their size at all and so I really thought that the packages would keep up but just like a I was afraid of they just keep monotonous boring looking colonies and you're fixing to see and this colony right here is queenless so we're gonna be able to do some interesting stuff on this one and it's just unbelievable how big of a difference it makes now I don't think it's all genetics I do believe that our genetics are better than the average commercial strain but I, I do think that their queens would do fine if they were mated properly. I feel like that's the biggest problem is they're not mated properly. Because I'm not seeing any signs of disease. I'm not seeing any type signs of aurora problems and there shouldn't be because they're young and I hit them with oxalic acid vapor about eight days after we installed them. So it, there's no signs of disease. There's no signs of anything except a poor queen, which is just pathetic because if you have a poor queen, then you're out of luck. Now, I just wanted to show you this for an example. This is a split we made. Look at all those bees. They're even drawing some comb over there, eating that patty up. This is the parent colony. When I checked this to feed it. Oops. Oops, small high beetle. Ah, not anymore. Look at all those bees. Look at all those things. Eating on that patty. When I was going through them just a little bit when I threw that patty on, they had five frames with brood on them. So between these two colonies, we'll probably end up splitting them again later in the year. If things, if it, both of them if their queens keep chugging away the way that they've been doing then it's gonna be great this is the other nuke and these are from our April 21st something like that installed and look at those bees there's just bees everywhere now let's look at the packages all right so this one's in the best shape as of last week Notice how those have all drawn their combs out. This is the best one. This one's not too bad. It's got a decent bit of bees under the lid. These the boxes are wet because I was watering the raspberries earlier. It's been dry here. Man, we're going to go ahead and dive underneath. Let's go right down in the next box. The small hive beetles are really starting to be seen a lot more lately. It's just that time of the year. Oh, by the way, there's our, the patty. Boy, they're not eating that really hard, are they? They might be doing more damage underneath. All right, so since we did the last video with the packages, which was almost three weeks ago, each one of these has received three gallons of syrup, actually a little bit more than that, and at least two pounds of patty, minimum. Plus we've had a little bit of pollen coming in. So check this underneath here, and look how much they've drawn. They've got this one drawn, these three are eh, kind of, most of these are kind of, and these two here. Poor queen. This poor queen. 
Now, I have had commercial queens that were like this, and when they raised a proper, good supersedure queen off of those genetics, she was great, but she was mated properly, and I really think it comes down to that. There's no signs of disease in here. I gotta take it easy. I kinda hurt my back this morning a little bit. It's not because of the deeps. I was handling something awkward. So let's see what we have here under this patty. They're eating that to a degree. Now if you get a patty that has a lot of larvae in it, if I see a, a, just a tiny bit, I'm not too freaked out. What in the world is that cat doing? <laughs> Telling you what, as long as it's not climbing on me with those things. But as long as the larvae, the small high beetle larvae aren't too bad, I'm not too concerned, but it's kind of part of learning how to feed patties. One, they need to be consuming it good. You need to make sure the bees have plenty of access. And you also need to make sure that you don't put on too much. And it, it's a little bit of an art form. Like that colony over there, we have a frame, uh, I mean, uh, da, 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 a feeder rim. I never can get that right. I don't know why, but that feeder rim really helps them consume it. Plus you have to have healthy bees in a colony that's brooding hard that really fills the urge to consume a lot of protein. And so if you don't have these factors, um, then they might not consume it as fast. You might create a lot of those small hive beetle larvae, which is a problem because it only takes about three, well, it takes about three to 12 weeks for those larvae to go out of the hive, drop down below and, and pupate in the ground. Now, depending on your soil, depending on the temperatures, how long it takes them to go through their uh, uh, pupa stage and then turn into an adult beetle and then they're flying back to your hives. Hey, back for more. And there's things that we're gonna show you that can help you deal with that. I can't really do it because it's too expensive on a commercial scale, but for a hobby, I think it's a great idea. So we'll be hitting that um, shortly. Now this, this again is the best of the package hives and it is okay, but let me, just because we see a lot of bees doesn't mean that this long term is gonna be a great colony. And I'm fixing to show you why. So again, they have feed, they have been fed. There's even a little bit of pollen coming in, but let's look at the pattern. Uh, you know, not every frame has to be perfect. Things happen. Frames get full of food. All right. This is hatching out right here. That's halfway decent. Queens laying in this frame. There's eggs down in there where the bees have been hatched out already. Stick this frame over here. So what I'm wanting to do is to keep this colony because it's the best of the packages with the original queen. We're gonna baby it as best we can and just see what they do. And then we're going to have to work on the other two. I wanna replace the queens in both of those. And like I said, this one in the middle on this row, wow, that looks a lot better. Okay, the last time I checked this, the pattern wasn't near as good, but we've been feeding them solid for a little while. That doesn't look too bad at all. Still, the why have they not drawn as much comes as the nukes. They've been fed more than the nukes. And they weren't that much smaller, if they were at all smaller. So we're just going to keep the feed onto this colony here. So we don't have a bunch of those combs drawn above, and they still haven't drawn this one out. That one over there is not all the way drawn out. But there's eggs down in there. There's larvae over here. All right, so that concludes our inspection on this one. Let's throw it back together and let's get to the queenless colony. I hate bees that don't requeen themselves, but it's a great way to get them out of the gene pool. Now, if we were not doing this for, you know, kind of show and tell, I would probably just consolidate that colony into another one because I don't have time for that in real life. This is real life, but in her business life, if I have a colony that gets like this one right here, I'm just condensing into another colony. I, I can't take the time to just uh, throw a queen in there and try to fix it up. Now, it, it was partially my fault. It, it went queenless obviously a while ago. 
because there is very little brood in there. If there's any right now, I doubt there's any. They've got weight up here. I guarantee you though, had we not been feeding this colony, they wouldn't look near as good as what they do. They'd be going backwards big time. And that's why you can't just listen to information like some of those people will tell you, oh, I never feed my bees. I just stick them in and let nature take care of everything. <laughs> some people are that just that lucky, I guess. The rest of us have to work for it. All right, so keep in mind that queenless colonies can sometimes be very aggressive. You can have a colony that's as gentle as a kitten and then come back a few weeks later or a month later and that queen's uh, been replaced or they're going through a super procedure or whatever and that colony will staple your socks to your ankles. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and jump on down. I've already checked this top box. There's only like three frames that are completely drawn up here, which is so frustrating because comb is so valuable. They do have a decent bit of weight in the frames that they have, but there's just no brood down in here anywhere. There's just, there's no queen, nothing. I mean, look how small this colony is too, and these bees are getting older by the day. There's nothing, and I, you know, I've already checked them. So one of the things that we're going to do to try to salvage this colony, it's not as easy as, oh my goodness, I'm queenless, because if you're at this stage and there's no brood in the hive, you're already in the 11th hour. This is one of the reasons why I'm really hesitant um, to recommend walk-away splits to people. Because if you make a walk-away split, say you did exactly what we did over there to that deep, and you had just done a walk-away split with it, it takes almost 49 to 50 days, you know, probably 45 to 50 days, depending on how quickly your queen comes back from mating flights and weather conditions and all that stuff, if she comes back, before she comes back, lays, and then her brood hatches out. But if she doesn't come back, then that colony is gonna have to be combined with another colony quickly because bees are extremely reluctant. And that is why in a case like this with these bees here, there's no brood in that colony, zero. They tried to supersede and it failed. And so that colony, I should have got on top of it quicker, but I just didn't check them. I was just feeding these colonies. And one of the reasons I found out that this colony was queenless is because they stopped eating their patty completely when the rest of the colonies were consuming it. And that's actually, a Feeding is a great indicator on colony health. If you have a colony that's not eating their patties and all the rest of them are, or they're not taking sugar syrup, or they're drowning in their frame feeders when the rest of them aren't, then that could be an indication that your bees are sickly. And uh, I mean, these, these bees right here, if I stuck one of my mated queens in there, they would more than likely probably kill her. Older bees just have a hard time with it. I don't know how many times I've had a colony that have no brood like this and you try to requeen them and they just end up killing your expensive queen anyway and plus if you're like me and you went on your vacation or something like that and you come back and your colonies like this then you got to order your queen if you can find one immediately and then by the time you get the thing install it in she comes out this colony's dwindled even more it's a it's a hard situation but what we're going to do is give them a little help and that's why i always recommend that you get to the kind of the point of sustainability. And I really think probably five hives mm -hmm. um, to make it easy is a good sustainable number. You can do it with a little bit less than that maybe, but you need some backup nukes or something. Um, it's just really hard to be sustainable with one or two colonies because things happen. I mean, this colony went queen queenless. It wasn't anything that we did. She was a poor queen from the get-go. Now this one over here tried to supersede earlier and the brood in it just was terrible. And still is terrible. We probably should have just let them do their thing. Well, I did let them try to raise a queen over here and they just didn't do it. The best thing is just to get a good queen from the get-go. All right, so we're gonna go into this colony that it has a great queen. And we are going to help that little colony over there because we need some nurse bees. We need some brood. So let's see what we can find in here. You know, it's getting kind of late for this.
smoke thing. And that's a bunch of hatching out stuff. Excuse me. Yeah, this is great. This stuff's hatching out. We'll give them that one. Let's see if we can find some with some eggs and larvae. That really helps them because if we introduce a queen to that one and we have larvae, then that really helps put the bees at ease. They kind of feel like the, the new queen you're introducing is kind of helping take care of business even though it wasn't her. All right, there's a little bit of larvae in there. Oh yeah, there's a bunch over here. Make sure we're not shaking the queen. Bunch of really young stuff on this side. I don't know if you can see it with the lighting. It's pretty dark. And then on the other side, we have some stuff that's just being capped. Some older larvae and some stuff that's capped. Now the reason these patterns, I believe, are so spotty... Woohoo! I got one going up my shorts. Fun days in the bee yard. That's why you don't wear shorts. All right, so is because there's been probably nectar and stuff in here, or sugar syrup, I should say. And so that's why it's so spotty like that. As they're clearing nectar, she's laying it makes the pattern look all funny. All right, so we're going to exchange some frames here. Oh, that's what I was needing. Now we are going to be placing these down here in the bottom. We're going to be removing a couple of these, probably the worst ones. And then we've got to get a queen from Kathleen's Princess Bees. That's not too bad of a drawn frame. We'll exchange that out. Maybe this hive over here will finish drawing that frame. But this is why it's so important to have multiple hives because you can really help this colony out. Now, honestly, again, in, in my business, I don't have time to do this. And I've had this happen, you know, even with some of my fine queens. I, I had a, a couple swarm in one yard this year, and uh, I didn't have time to just go in there and requeen them or anything. And so I let them see if they would take care of the it themselves with the swarm, the super seizure or swarm cells they had left, whatever. And uh, they didn't, they didn't come back. And uh, it just got to the point where we just had to combine them with another colony. We just, we need to focus on our champs, not focus on our wimps. And honestly, high maintenance colonies are not ones that we want to breed for. Give them a little ramp. All right, so now it doesn't seem like a whole lot giving them these two frames of brood right here, but this literally is thousands of nurse bees. And so we're going to stick these right in the middle, and then we are going to come back, and we are going to put a queen right in between these combs. We're going to give them a little bit of feed to kind of help put them at ease, just a little sugar syrup, no protein. There's no need for protein right now for them because they won't consume it that good anyways, even with this brew that we're putting in. We're gonna put that queen right in between, but we are not gonna just leave the candy. I am a huge fan in this situation of the, playing the long game on queen introductions. There's no reason to rush it. So what I would do is get a cork, something that is not going to let them chew through. I've seen it before where people will plug beeswax, and I tried that one time and they chewed through the beeswax. It's like a quarter inch thick went through the candy and then still got the queen. So I'm going to stick her in between, probably give them five days with her. Then I'm going to gently go in, unplug that, and then let them chew through it over the next couple of days. And that, I believe, is gonna work for me. And we're gonna find out, of course, in this video series. So I'll be introducing the queen probably tomorrow. I'll try to do a video on it. But queen introductions, there's a lot of nuances there. Excuse me, bees. All right. But seeing how we can help keep ourselves sustainable, I really do believe that with a little bit of work, we can fix this colony. But you can't just throw in a queen. If they were further gone than that, 
they've still got a pretty decent bit of bees. I don't, I still would rather, it, honestly, if you got enough bees, I would just rather make a split, kind of like what we did over there, because it's balanced out. You've got a lot of nurse bees, and I, I prefer my splits like that one, which is almost exclusively young bees, pretty much was, because all the old ones fly back, all that stuff, and it just, it works very, very well where these are you know, kind of high risk for your queens. Let's just check this one really quick because we have it in three weeks. I know this video is getting long, but we're here. Now popping the box like that is really not a good idea. It makes them a little angry, but there's not a whole lot of bees up top. That's pretty lightweight. Look at that. Where's the bees? Now I did smoke them, but this is just ridiculous. Not all commercial queens are like this, but it comes down to good mating. And these guys are raising hundreds of thousands of queens and they're doing a lot of them in the, the earliest parts of their season. And it's very, very difficult to get them made a good. I mean, look at that brood. Abysmal. We're gonna be reducing this hive down We'll be consolidating some of these boxes. There's some more brood. We'll probably take all the brood frames and some of the honey frames and put them in one box. And then we're going to requeen, find the queen, and then we're going to uh, give her the hive tool test and see how well she does with it. And then we're going to introduce a new one. Now there's young brood over there. But it's just so spotty. You have different ages. You have young stuff cap stuff. No diseases. Just a poor, poor queen. And if you let your colony, if, if we let this colony just keep doing its thing, nature's going to have its way with it and it's going to kick this colony's butt. This thing's not even going to make it to December. I promise you. So, you know, we'll stick our queen in there. We might even give them a frame of brood from one of those just to kind of help give them a boost and uh, to help them out a little bit. So anyways, that's the package versus nuke challenge that we're dealing with. I really thought that the packages would hold their weight a little bit more, but they're just not keeping up with our nukes. And I really did not do this challenge to promote our stuff at all. I really thought we, we would get some packages that would be right neck and neck with them not all of them because i've dealt with packages enough to know that they are not as good as they need to be on on average but i still felt like out of three that we would get at least one that was just a you know a champ kind of like those that you know you can actually work with and make more bees and make honey off of and they draw a comb like they're supposed to frustrating this colony over here, the one we just pulled those two frames of brood from, we could have split it like the other one. I'm kind of glad we didn't already because we'll be using it to just help these guys balance themselves out. So those two right there, if we split them in half and ignored these, we could have four good solid colonies, which would give us more out of the nukes than we had with the packages. And they've drawn more comb. They're gonna, I think we could split them again in uh, August, late August if we keep feeding them like that we do. So there's a lot of variables in beekeeping. That is why taking control of your stock as much as possible or finding somebody who will deliver that. And by the way, thanks everyone for all the questions on if we're selling queens. We just can't handle all the orders right now. We, uh, I really did not get this YouTube channel to help promote all of our queen sales, but I get so many orders um, every week and a lot of times every day. I just, uh, I, I don't have any for sale right now. Um, for every, I can't, I take, can't take any more orders basically. And we try to do larger orders because it saves us a lot of time. So, whew, it's time to get in the AC. Thank you, Lord, that we live in a time for some, that has some air conditioning, one of the greatest inventions that man ever came up with. Thanks for watching our videos.